Hello one and all, and thank you for joining me for another Turbo Rebuild. This is going to be a very thorough look for people of all skill levels into a Garrett T3 Turbo. Now this particular one came out of a Volkswagen 1.6 TD, but it's also very similar to a Mercedes 300D or OM617 engine. But this review should help you pretty much do any kind of rebuild on any kind of T3 or T4 Garrett turbocharger. There are two kinds of turbochargers you could expect to see on the 1.6 diesels. On the right we have our Garrett T3 and on the left is this Triple K K14. Now if you take a look at them, the Garrett is much bigger and it can hold a lot more boost. Something like 20 pounds versus the Triple K which will hold something like 12. And we want more boost for this particular application. In addition to our rebuild, we're also going to be reclocking the turbo. And for those that aren't aware of what that is, reclocking just means repositioning the compressor housing and the turbine housing to fit a new orientation. In this image right here, we have the Volkswagen Quantum setup. And as you can see, the turbo is sitting pretty far back there on the manifold. And in our truck setup, that's going to be way too far back there. It's going to be right up against the firewall. So we're going to take it and we're going to set up it like this. Now this image would be how a 1.6 eco diesel would be set up with the smaller K14 turbo. And that is propped up right against the intake manifold. Extremely simple turbo routing and most importantly it'll keep the end of the turbo far away from the firewall. So we'll have plenty of space to deal with. Now this turbo was rusted up solid when we got it. So while it doesn't have any shaft play in and out or side to side, it doesn't turn very freely at all. So it's going to need a rebuild. The first step to take apart this T3 is to grab a 10 millimeter and to pop off this heat shield. Well, truth be told, the first step is really to believe in yourself. And as corny as that is, it's important to understand that these sort of projects aren't as complicated as they seem. And even though I make some mistakes, including the big one, I still have the skills to be able to recover from it and end up with a complete turbo. So if I can do it, so can you. So I took off that heat shield and I also took off the wastegate lines. You just take those off with pliers of any kind. I didn't film it because I was taking pictures by mistake, like a dunce. Anyway, now we're taking off this ring here around the turbine housing. And those are, I believe they're supposed to be 13 millimeters, but in my case, this half inch was working much better. And we're going to do the turbine first because it's much easier to pop it off when you have the large compressor to hit it with because it's a uh, it was pretty stuck on there and remember heat and PB blaster is your friend because I, I ended up needing both in spades to get this bugger off and you can see just how difficult these bolts are to pull and even despite the fact that these are PB blastered and I heated the last one up I still shear the head off of one of them but that's okay we're able to work through it at this point, if you're not planning to clock the turbo and leave it in its original configuration, you should grab yourself a paint marker and mark on the turbine and compressor housing where they are. Because before you start taking these off, you'll want to know where they sit for when you put them back together. But for me, I'm going to be putting in a different orientation, so I don't bother with that. I wasn't lying when I said that turbine housing was going to be hard to get off. Once all your housing bolts are either off or sheared, busted out the soft hammer, gave it a couple taps, then I got the pry bar and then I pried on it, then I busted out the map gas and then I really torched the bugger, and then I used the even harder hammer and I'm not ashamed to admit that I also used that sledge hammer that you see sitting on the back. Mm -hmm. And it took quite a lot of heating and quite a lot of hammering to be able to pop it off. Don't let this short video fool me, um, I was here for several hours, but... If you keep at it, you'll be able to get it off. Next, we're going to pop off this retaining ring. It doesn't quite look like that, but it does have an oval edge. And if you finagle it just right, you can lift it over the main body and the turbine. And we're just going to take it and lay it out on the back here. You can see I'm going to get a nice line going to sort of mimic the exploded diagram that I've been referencing. Here I am taking off the bolts on the rear of the compressor housing. These are supposed to be 10 millimeters, but with how rusty and nasty they looked, 
I just tapped a 3 8 on there just to make it that much more grippy. And these were pretty tough to come off. I think that was the right choice. Afterwards, I did thread one back in, and that's because when we take off the front compressor housing, we want it to, the rear one, to be retained so we're not pushing up against the compressor wheel because that could be bad. So thread one back in when you're done. So right here are the bolts. Those are the ones I left back in. They'll be coming out much easier now that I broke them free. And we'll just be working our way around the compressor, getting all these retainers off. The bolts are 13 millimeter. And these are much easier going without the turbine housing. Especially that big chunky wastegate, it can really get in the way. But this, easy peasy. Now this one comes just right off. It's pretty oily and nasty, but a lot of that in there is probably PB Blaster and WD-40 from when this thing was seized. I don't know if that's really indicating a seal. I'm sure I made quite a mess freeing it up. And we'll take our compressor housing and stick it in a line with everything else. Here we go. Here is where I make the big mistake. And those of you that have taken apart other turbos probably know exactly what I'm talking about. In fact, you probably knew right when I mentioned it at the beginning of the video. But now it's time to take the nut on the turbo shaft off. And now when people on the internet say that all of these are reverse thread, what they really mean is that most of them are reverse thread. In fact, I'm willing to bet 99% of them are reverse thread. Not mine! And uh, literally the problem here was that I did not obey rule number one. I did not believe in myself. The ridiculous thing was that this um, <laughs> this thread actually stuck out of the nut. And I could see it. And I even held up an another bolt to it. I'm like, huh, that looks like a normal thread. But I didn't believe in myself to follow through. I, I believed the people of the internet. And I broke the turbo shaft. <sighs> like a moron. I should stop moaning and explain how to actually do this. So the first thing you're going to do, like I said, is get yourself a normal bolt and compare the threads to the threads on the turbo shaft if they poke out. If they follow the same thread pattern as your normal bolt, then it's just the usual righty tighty lefty loosey. But if it goes the opposite way, then it's reverse thread. Then you're going to want to get yourself a 14 millimeter end wrench and put it on the end of the turbine on that hex. And then grab yourself a 10 millimeter 12 point and you stick that on the compressor nut and crank that whichever way you discover. Don't do what I did. Don't just listen to people on the internet. Find out for yourself. For the l Save yourself. Whew, almost lost my cool there for a second. Well, as you can see, I'm continuing on bold as brass. I'm going to take that turbo shaft and have it welded back up. It's actually a pretty clean break, so I'm at least going to get it fixed up to the point where I can put it back together. I don't know if I'll use it, but I'm going to continue on and get it fixed up for the sake of the tutorial. Now I'm taking off the compressor backing plate, and with it is going to come the thrust spacer and the thrust spring. Just leave them all together for now. And that piece that fell on the ground is the thrust collar that usually slots into the thrust bearing you can see right here it's got a little groove for it it notches into the bearing both of those are wear parts and replacements come in the kit so take them and put them in the line next we're going to pop off the bearing retainer ring this thing is actually too small for my ring clips but with just a couple of picks it actually comes out pretty easily I'm just going to fish that one out. Now, unlike the KO3, this one actually has two retaining rings and two bearings to take out. Now, I could have tapped the turbine out at any point, but I'm understandably gun shy about using excessive force now. 
So there we go. There is our kind of broken turbo shaft. And I'm just wiping it off to see how it looks. The shaft is actually pretty clean. There's quite a lot of schmoo on the turbine. But that thing was actually full of rust when I got it. So that's probably a mixture of just rust and WD-40. So there we go. Here's our little deflector. That thing's pretty dirty. Put it in line two. And you can see when I pick up the body down by that half moon circle, the bearing fell out. Now I'm popping off the turbine side bearing retainer. This one's a little bit deeper, but it comes out no problem. There's actually two inner retainers out in this thing as well, but you don't need to take them out. And I will never take an extra retaining ring out that I don't have to. So just the outer two is all you need to do this rebuild, so that's all I'm going to do. This one also, you just put it upside down and pop out the bearing. And there it is. There's also a O-ring that's still sunk in the body there. There we go. All organized. Job's not done yet. We're going to take all of our aluminum pieces and the turbo shaft and a couple of the really nasty bits over to the sink. Grab some dish soap, scotch Bright, and an old toothbrush. And just clean it off as much as we can. There's no shortcuts here. Just got to take the time, get it as clean and as oil-free as you can. And once you got it nice and good, you're just going to take the whole kit and caboodle and just throw it in the parts washer. You're going to put that thing on for as long and as hot as you possibly can. And send it. Not only did I manage to break a bolt off in the turbine housing, but I also managed to break off an easy out or an extractor, which is hardened. So here we are, after about a day's work, I finally managed to grind the thing out. And then after that, I stuck it in the drill press and just drilled it out all the way. No more extractor. And tapped it. And whenever you get a chance with the drill press, um, use the tap in it as well. You'll be sure to get it straight and true down the hole you just made. Now it's time to put this thing back together. Here we got one of our bearings. We're just going to put a little bit of assembly lube on it. While we put it together. Might not be needed, but better safe than sorry. Can't have too much of it in there. So just drop it down onto the other snap ring, the deeper one. And then you got to put the next ring right on top. This would probably work better with some really tiny ring pliers, but all I have are picks. Now we flip it over to the easier side. We got another bearing. Just do the same thing on this side. Next, we've got our turbo shaft here. I'm gonna add this little heat shield on first. Don't forget that. Next, we've got the turbo main shaft. If you remember, I broke it before. But I took it to a friend, we got it welded, we got it rough, roughly balanced, and uh, we're going to try to use this. So I'm just putting a little bit of the assembly lube on the thicker parts. That's where it's going to contact the bearing. This also has a little ring on it, closer to the turbine. Don't forget that either. Then we're just going to drop it in, and you give it a little push until it clicks. There you go, heard it click, and it should spin relatively easy. Next we have our thrust bearing and collar. Because of the alignment pins, the collar will only go on one way. And you stick the bearing, and you have it pointing out with the longer side towards you from this orientation. And don't forget, there's a seal that goes on this. I forgot, but be better than me. That should be in your kit as well. Next, we're going to be putting on our thrust spring. This one also comes with a spare in the kit. I can't really tell the difference. It doesn't look like these really wear. But I'm going to use the new one anyway, just to be safe. Just drop that in the back of your plate and put it all together. Now you're going to want to stop here and be sure that you have your O-ring. That would sit on the turbo body just inside the four mounting holes. Your kit will come with a spare. And you also want to be sure that thrust bearing has that snap ring in it. I missed it 
and you can see right here it seals the back of the compressor housing so that's quite a thing to miss that would keep all of our boost in it also gave us a lot of shaft play before I fixed it and you can see there there was a little bit of a wiggle on the housing that's just because the spring is pressing up against the thrust bearing once you go ahead and you tighten all these four mounting bolts down then you shouldn't have a problem So here we go, here's the moment of truth. We got our compressor wheel, and we're gonna drop it onto our custom, big air quotes, welded up after being broken turbo shaft. And the reason it's broken again, <laughs> this is a normal thread one, so keep that in mind. Doesn't look too bad, it slid on quite nicely, it's actually aligned, but the real test is going to be, can we torque it down? Torky torky. Whoops. Didn't work. That's the stance of a broken man. The stance of a man who broke his turbo shaft. Oh yeah. Think about that. Oh yeah, lose it. Just pitch it through the window. Scream. Scream. Punch a wall. Punch a wall. Just lose it. The whole turbo. Launch it through the window. Just scream. Yell. Do it. Ah. Oh. Whew. Saved by the bell, huh? So it's some time later, and what we got here in this box is another turbo shaft. This is actually one from a T3 from a Mercedes OM617. They don't sell the Volkswagen ones anymore. But the problem here is that the inducer, or the wider diameter, was a little too long. So I actually took it down to uh, Diesel Dave's, and his grandpa, he helped me grind it down on a, on a valve grinder of all things. And now it'll fit in the housing. I got this Garrett Impeller from Mercedes Source. And it came with a lemon head in the package. And I just want to let you know, Packer over there at MercedesSource.com, that that lemon head in my package was the highlight of a very trying day. So thank you. So now we're just going to do the exact same thing as we did before with the old shaft, but with our new one. I really wish I had filmed the process of adapting the Mercedes OM617 one to match this Volkswagen 1.6. Because like I said, they don't really make these 1.6 ones anymore, but they do have the Mercedes ones. And it was really some genius thinking on the part of Diesel Dave's grandpa to think to put it in the valve grinder. But, you know, he's kind of a bit of an old timer. And I'm sure if I had a camera that I was talking to, it would have um, would have irritated him a little bit. <laughs> he would never say, though, he's way too nice. But just know that if you find yourself in the situation that you can take these Mercedes turbo shafts from the ON617 and you just grind them down in a valve grinder if you got one. I wouldn't recommend doing it by hand because the valve grinder really gets that perfect roundness to it and no way I'd be able to manage this with like a Dremel or something like that. It would be it would be horrific. All right, for real this time. Here's our compressor wheel. Now you should note that this uh, Mercedes turbo shaft is reverse threaded. You can see where the confusion comes from. But I'm not going to push it all the way down. Got our reverse threaded nut. And no more torque specs. No more messing around. I'm not damaging this thing. No way. So just going to be really gentle with it. And just snug it on there. Because we're, we're not dealing with the normal one, and I'm not too worried about the regular thread being torqued right. This is just going to go just enough. I've already snapped a shaft two times. Not doing it again. Mm. 
There we go. Just, just, a, just a little bit. Just a little bit. And that'll be good. So here's a fun little tidbit of information. You're going to need to install an oil drain and an oil drain extension like this one I have here if you're going to do the higher style turbo mount like the eco diesels. Because once you get this thing together, you won't be able to get the geometry to line up to put this extension in before. And you won't be able to use the old one because the manifold will be there. So put it in now. I'm warning you. This is just a simple one I got off of Amazon. It's an AN10 fitting. You can see even adding the drain now, we got to do a little bit of cutting. So just got the manifold on the bench. Doing a little bit of dremeling, just right where that uh, drain extension is. Just cutting that rib down a little bit, and then it should fit just fine. There we go. You can see what a tight fit that is, too. Now it's time for some never sees, because if you recall, we broke off one of these bolts in the housing. And can't go wrong with never sees. I got myself some stainless hardware. So we're pulling out all the plugs. These are not going to be solid next time. Now we're going to take our turbo core and hold it up like this and drop all these flange bolts into the flange like this. And the reason you want to do that is because it is possible to get yourself to a point where you're actually stuck. It is possible once you got this thing together to not be able to get that last bolt in. So the only way to do it is this ridiculous way of holding the thing up and dropping all the bolts in now. There's actually quite a lot of processes like that with this turbo. It's much more difficult than like the KO3 is. Just because of the way the geometry turns out like this. So here we go. We're going to drop it on. And we're going to have that oil drain be as close to the um, wastegate housing as we can possibly get. And we're just going to slowly torque these down to the point where it will sit on flush. There you go, that's the tough one to get to right there. Now rather than draw down these bolts, what we're going to do is take the compressor housing, put it on top like that, and get a big rubber mallet. And we're just going to drop it down into the turbine housing, because it is possible as you're drawing these bolts down that you could bind the turbine um, the turbine itself up against the walls. So I'm just checking to be sure we didn't do that. Well, now that we moved the oil drain and lo relocated the turbo core to match, our initial line for the turbine housing clocking is no longer lined up. So I got my setup mocked up here again. This is how it's going to look on the side of the head. And we're just going to get a new line going here. Grab your trusty paint marker. And I think that plumbing's pretty obvious. I don't think it gets any easier than that. So mark up the compressor. Now here we go. I got some RTV copper. I don't know if copper is necessary. There used to be like a little tiny gasket there. But that pretty much always breaks. I've never seen there be a replacement for that either. So you're pretty much going to be stuck with a sealant. Putting a little too much probably here, just running it through the groove with my finger, and then wiping it out down with you know, a dry finger and a cloth. You really don't need all that much. So here we go, it should look something like this. Even then, that's a little bit excessive.
Now we're taking this thing and dropping it on. You should note that at this point it's once again possible to trap yourself if you just go ahead and grab all your fasteners and, and these little brackets and start tightening them all down. So we're going to first go for this one down here. This is the, the bugbear. It's a little bit tedious, but you kind of got to get it in as you're dropping down the rest of the turbo. So there we go. There it is. And this one is the toughest one. The rest should be done pretty much no problem. There's a little bit better of a view of it. You can see that it's uh, it's really tight in there. So that one goes first. So at this point, you're pretty much home free. We're just putting on some exhaust stuff. There goes the gasket. And using lots of never sees because you know how exhaust can be. And up next, we got the manifold. You would think that there would be a gasket between the turbo and the manifold, but I've never actually seen one whenever I take apart these TDIs or 1.6s. But I can't really leave that alone, so I, I put up some... Um, RTV on that one as well. Just getting it lined up. And again, lots of never sees because on the KO3s and on these, it's very possible to snap these bolts. So here we go. And then we just got the tubes for our wastegate. Those go on pretty easily. Now here we go. I was worried there was a little bit of shaft play on the thing, just a bit of in and out shaft play, but it's well within spec. So there we go. There is our Garrett T3 turbocharger all rebuilt, and I made just about every single mistake you could along the way, but here it is, all done and built. And if I can do it, then you can certainly do it as well. Hope the video was informative. Thanks for watching.